Jacob M. presents Prime Ministerial Prime Elections Ministerial in Elections Canadian History. In Canadian. The 14th federal election in Canadian history took place on December 6, 1921. We finally reached the Roaring Twenties. Parliament was dissolved as usual by the Governor General, this time by Julian Bing. Shortly after the 1917 election, Prime Minister Robert Borden finished off his term, during which the First World War ended. Borden pleaded for Canada to represent itself at the Paris Peace Conference rather than being represented by Britain. After a while of negotiating with British Prime Minister David Lloyd George, Canada was allowed to represent itself at the peace conferences. Borden's agreement with the British Prime Minister saw Canada become a nation on the world stage instead of being seen as a colony of the British Empire. With Canada being allowed its own own voice in the peace conferences, the rest of the British dominions were allowed their own seats as well. Meanwhile, back in Canada, lots of reforms were made to appease the public, notably in 1918 when Parliament granted women over the age of 21 the right to vote. Later, in 1920, the Borden government passed the Dominions Elections Act, allowing women to run for Parliament. A year earlier, Borden kept an old election promise and nationalized railway companies, creating the Canadian National Railways Company, which is still operated today. It wasn't all fun and games in Canada, as in 1919, a year after the Great War had ended, much like in other countries, those who came back from the war were unemployed. And those who were employed were being paid too little, as well as being overworked, which led up to the Winnipeg General Strike, when talks between workers and managers broke down and thousands of protesters took to the streets of Winnipeg to protest. Borden, being afraid that the protest would spread to other cities, took action, and cabinet ministers met with strike organizers and reached an agreement for them to return to work, except for government workers which were threatened with being fired if they didn't return to work. In some areas, the strikes didn't end and descended into riots, so the Northwest Mounted Police had to be dispatched to contain the riots. This turned the protests violent, as police beat people with clubs and reportedly fired bullets into the crowd. Within days, the strikes ended, but with two people killed, and this event became known as Bloody Sunday. In May of 1920, due to failing health, Borden resigned. At first, he favored Finance Minister William Thomas White to succeed him, but after White refused, Borden persuaded Minister of the Interior Arthur Meehan to succeed him. After some persuasion, Meehan accepted and was sworn in as the ninth Prime Minister in Canadian history. Most of Meehan's time as Prime Minister was spent combating the Depression of 1920-21, which was a worldwide recession that occurred shortly after World War I. Meehan combated the recession by cutting his government spending and resisting regulation, but he minimally intervened in the economy and large unemployment rose, which made Made the situation worse. This led to the rise of a new political party known as the Progressive Party after the government did little to help farmers in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. This party was led by Thomas Creer, the former Minister of Agriculture of the Union government who left the party in 1919 because of the government's high tariffs on Canadian farmers. Although the farmers movement and Progressive Party were largely socialist and more left-leaning, they chose to support the Liberals as the Liberals were against the government's high tariffs imposed on agriculture. Speaking of the Liberals, Wilfrid Laurier died in 1919 and a National Liberal Convention was organized to elect a leader and to reunite the party from the divisive 1917 conscription election, especially after most of the members of the party joined Borden's union government. At the convention, rather than members of parliament choosing their new leader, Liberal Party members chose their party leader, which composed of ordinary citizens who were just members of the Liberal Party. This was done since the the Liberal Caucus no longer felt it was a representative of Canada's linguistic and religious diversity. There were four candidates to choose from at the convention. There was Daniel Mackenzie, the party's interim leader after Laurier's death and member of parliament for North Cape Breton and Victoria, George Perry Graham, the former member of parliament for Renfrew South, William Stevens Fielding, the member of parliament for Shelburne and Queens and former minister of finance and premier of Nova Scotia, and William Leon Mackenzie King, the former minister Minister of Labour. Mackenzie King was supported from the Quebec faction of the delegates as he refused to join the Union government and was against conscription, which also granted him support from the left-wing part of the party. On the fourth ballot, after a tight race with William Fielding, Mackenzie King won and became the leader of the Liberal Party. This was the first time a party leader was elected by party members rather than by a party caucus. Going into the election, Meehan's short time in office had begun to look like it was coming to an end just as fast as it started. He was out of touch with 
Canadians and the many Liberals who joined the Union government were leaving to rejoin the Liberal Party under Mackenzie King. The conscription crisis of 1917 had left its mark on the party as Quebecers refused to vote for the Conservatives, instead pledging their support to the Liberals. The party was also beginning to lose votes in the prairies after the rise of the Progressive Party and Farmers' Movement. And here are the results. Mackenzie King won, becoming the 10th Prime Minister in Canadian history. He won 118 seats, 36 more than in the previous election, and received 41.15% of the popular vote. King won all seats in Quebec and most seats in the Maritimes, which helped him win his majority. This was the first elected Liberal government in over 10 years. In second was the Progressive Party, which won 58 seats and received 21.09% of the popular vote. A candidate of theirs by the name of Agnes McPhail won the seat she was running in and became the first woman elected to federal parliament in Canadian history. The Progressive Party unsurprisingly won most of their seats in the Prairie Provinces, helping them win the second most seats in the House of Commons. In third place was Arthur Meehan and the Conservative Party, which only won 49 seats, 104 less than in the previous election, and received 29.95% of the popular vote. Meehan's party became the third largest party in the House of Commons after the election and became the official opposition after the Progressive Party refused use that role. You may talk about your love affair. Here's one I'd like to tell to you.